Okay, so unit one, lesson two, explore, or page two. Um, continuing with Dear Charles Moves In. So students will solve a linear equation with variables on both sides now, including special cases resulting in true and false statements. In class, I was kind of going, sometimes your result ended up, I think one problem we ended up like this. That is a true statement. Um, it could have come down to having 0 on one side and negative 19 on the other. That would be a false statement or an untrue statement. Um, so we're going to kind of get into those things as we're solving for x. When solving linear equations, there are rules of order to follow. You must distribute if there is anything to distribute to remove the parentheses. If there are terms to combine, you must combine the terms after you distribute. Then you're allowed to move things across the equal sign and isolate or get the x by itself. You move by adding opposites, isolate by multiplier dividing by whatever's next to the x. That's called the numerical coefficient, whether it's a fraction or a whole number or whatever's next to the x. So when manipulating the equation to solve, the first step is removing the parentheses and so forth. Let's see. It's important to note that these two steps take place independently on each side of the equation. In other words, there might be something to distribute on this side of the equation and there's something to distribute on the other side. They're not related to each other. We just need to do both of them because each side is sort of handled separately. Um, and then when all that each side is handled and processed separately, then you're ready to move across the equal sign, okay? And then you always move before you isolate your variable or get X or S or whatever letter by yourself. And then you can always check by plugging it back in to the original. There are more problems on, uh, in your blue book for you to practice on, okay? So... Let's do these. So let's see. This says in equation 4 times 2 is 8x. 4 times negative 6 is negative 24. And then you bring the eight, 9 down. So I process that side first, okay, as far as distribution goes. Then I look at this side and see eight or 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21, and then you bring this along. Okay, so distribute first. Then, after you distribute, there might be something to combine. Right here are two constant terms that need to be combined, and over here are two variable terms that need to be combined on the side they're on. So negative 24 plus 9 is a negative 15. Don't touch the 8x yet. Over here, we have a 3x and an 8x. We need to combine them to get 11x. So the distribute and combine steps handled are handled independently on either side of the equal sign. Now, once we finish that, we're ready to move. So remember, our goal is to get all the x's on one side and add them all up and get all the constants on the other side or all the numbers and add them all up. So we want to make sure we're moving x's most of the time, you're, it's logical to be moving the x's that way, and any of the constant terms move them that way, okay? How do we move things? We move the variable terms to the left, the constants to the right, um, and how do we move things? We move by adding opposite, okay? So, sorry, it's getting a little messy. All right, so this is the problem on this side. We wanted to move this this way, okay? We move a negative 15 to the other side by adding its opposite, which is a positive 15. That makes it zero on this side, okay? Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. So if we add a 15, we wanna add 15 to this side. Now this side um, <clears throat> has a positive 11x that needs to go that way. So we can subtract 11x from that side, so that'll go away over here. 
we can combine these like terms over here and get your negative 6. And then that 11x comes over on this side. And combine them to get your negative 3x. So there's a lot of stuff going on. We distributed, we combined like terms, and then we moved and we combined like terms again. So just like when you're working an expression, you may have um, something you might multiply and add, and then you do something and you may need to multiply or add again. So it doesn't mean there's only once. So we are left with negative 3x equals negative 6. Okay? Do we get that from, let me erase some of this mess here. All right, so we went from here to here, okay? Move the 11 over, move the negative 15 over by adding its opposite, combining like terms, and I'm left with negative 3x equals 6. Now I'm ready to isolate my x by dividing by what's next to it. You use the same sign because you want negative 3 over negative 3 equals the 1 that we want. We want our final answer to be 1x. So that's what we divide by. And whatever you do to one side, you do to the other side. So a negative 6 divided by a negative 3 is a 2. So you're left with this. Okay. Don't forget to, you can always put the 2 back into your original problem way back over here. Okay. Everywhere there's an x, you can put a 2. So right here I did this. Um, you have to excuse all the different parentheses that I'm using. Oops, and I think I used the wrong bracket right there. That's supposed to be a hard bracket. So <clears throat> put the 2 back in, so 2 times 2 instead of 2x. And put the 2 back in here, so that makes that the 2, and that the 2, and that the 2. So I put there are three x's in the original equation. I put twos where they were. And instead of 8x, you're going to be multiplying 8 times 2. The PEM does sort of change things. Now that this is a 2 and not an x, you can add together the things in the parentheses. Now that we know the 2 is, we need to multiply and get the 4. Okay, then we put this together and get this. Multiply these together and get this. And then you're going to have that, which equals this. So yes, all this stuff on this side equals all this stuff on that side. So that is a true statement. Okay, in this case, x does equal 2. All right. So here's another example here. It says, interpret the results of special cases to yield true and false statements. There are more in the book on that page. Sometimes when properly manipulate an equation to solve, the variable you're solving for disappears. You have not made a mistake. When that happens, your solution will result in a true or false statement. Okay? So... Uh, we ended up with x equals 2 back up on this one. Well, what happens if we end up with 4 equals 2 and the x is gone? That's what we're talking about, okay? So in a true statement, when the x disappears, you're left with a constant equals a constant. So some number equals another number. If it's the same number, then your actual answer should be all real numbers. So in the homework, there should be a little box that says no solution, all real numbers, or x equals what. So in this problem up here, you're going to put x equals 2. In this problem right here, you may be putting, checking the little box that says all real numbers. If your x disappears and you're left with an untrue or false statement, Okay, that means no number will work for x. That means there is no solution to your equation. Okay, so let's look at these two right here. We have, let's, this is an equation. We don't know what's coming yet, so we need to process it. I see a distribution. My eyes should go right to that. Let's distribute. I cannot do what's in these parentheses. These are not like terms. So let's distribute the 3 here. Distribute the 3 here. 
Oh, and already that looks a little funny. I got the same thing on both sides, so that seems like a good thing. If you finish the process and move my six over here and move this 15 back over here, what are you going to get? You're going to get that goes away, that goes away, that goes away, that goes. So you're going to get zero equals zero. So our response is not going to be zero. Our x does not equal zero. What our x is anything, believe it or not. Let's try that. So let me show you that if it says all real numbers is our answer, that means we can put any number in for x. So let's put it in like a negative one. Okay, put that in there. And then whatever you put in for x over there, put it over here. So this would be 6 times a negative 1 minus 15. So do what's in here first. So that is 3. 2 times a negative is a negative. Then you're doing in here 3 minus 7. And it's a multiplication. Gives you a negative 21 on that side. Over here you have this first, which would be a negative 6 plus a negative 15 is going to give you a negative 21. So we just like tried a negative 1 going in there. So it does work. Any number, any real number will work for x. That's what this answer means. Okay? As opposed to this one over here. Let's see, here's an equation, let's distribute, distribute, bring this down, didn't touch that, equals that, and that's what I have so far. So, I distributed, see any like terms to combine? Well, we got this one and this one, let's put them together, so that would be what, 2x minus 10 equals 2x minus 7, so they're certainly not turning out to be the same thing. Um... Move the 2x over, and then move the 10 over. I like to do it together. I don't do it one little step at a time. I do two at one time. Uh, if that works for you, great. If it doesn't, um, don't do it that way. Um, notice what I'm getting here. I'm getting zero. That's a zero. That's a zero. Sorry, I can't bring this up anymore. Um, but all this over here equals what? A positive 3. So your final answer is 0 doesn't equal a positive 3. So that means no number that I put in for my x's will make this an actual equal. So there is no solution to these equations. Because they're, they're just not, either side is just not equal to each other. Okay. Up here, we did an example where one number would work in for x to make both sides equal to each other. One number. These had any number would work to make one side equal to each other. And this one, no numbers work to make each side equal to each other. All right, so we're going to make another one for the practice.